our work right now on the planet is to bring honoring and sanctity to the invisible just as much as the visible. The invisible results are things like feeling good, things like feeling connected, things like our health, our well-being, a feeling of joy, pleasure. Embodiment can't be faked once you're in an open state where you actually can see through a clear lens. You know, you're not clouded by fear, you're not clouded by the amygdala, you're not clouded by society's news and all the fear-based stuff, and you're just with you. Then you get to decide where you think we actually are. It is possible to navigate pain with grace. Energy is information. We're here to experience the full spectrum. That worthiness is hard for you. There's nothing wrong with you. It is a muscle that we kind of have to learn how to access. You are not disempowered and you have power in every area of your life all the time. I believe that chronic illness is an opportunity for us to heal. Health, it's a choice. Listening to your body if you so choose. My prayer for the world would be that they would know the infinite love of God. Aloha and welcome to the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast with your host, Jen Mons. Join me each week for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around awakening to your soul purpose through five-element well-being. Thank you so much for joining in. Aloha, my friends and family. Welcome back. I am back again to invite you into a conversation around prosperity. So you may remember episode 80. Five, which was in January of 2021, I offered an invitation to explore prosperity consciousness and also offered a prosperity prayer on that episode. So if you haven't listened to that and you love this episode, you love the conversation on prosperity, go ahead and check that out. I'm so excited to have this conversation today. I have been noticing a very heavy energy around scarcity. Scarcity is the opposite mindset of prosperity. And so I my intention for this episode is to really, really invite you in, allow the words to sink into your body on a cellular level, allow the vibration of what I'm sharing with you to be received because that is one of the big energies around prosperity is the willingness to receive. And I'm going to share with you what prosperity is, what it isn't, and how you can choose to live more in alignment with the energy of prosperity. So many of my followers, many people in my community are in a place in their life where They're seeking well-being, they're seeking balance, they're seeking freedom, and they're also wanting to grow spiritually. Whatever that means for each of you, it's different. Prosperity has been mentioned in the Bible many, many times. There are several references for my Christian friends. The Buddha has also shared many references to prosperity. In fact, I believe it's the Laughing Buddha that represents joy and wealth, right? I mean, that makes sense. Um, There's also teachings in the Tao. There are many different types of spiritual teachings that cover prosperity. My journey around my relationship to the money piece and prosperity, which is not all that prosperity is, but began in 2018. I had a coach who, as I was shifting from coach to business owner, willing to take up more space in the world is really what that was energetically, really helped me to identify a lot of the generational beliefs that were showing up with me around my pattern and behavior and emotional attachment to specifically money. Now, prosperity is not around money, but it is a big part of it. And the reason it's so important to talk about this is because it's one of the things we don't want to talk about. There's a couple of things we don't easily talk about in today's world. It's religion, politics, money, sex, and probably food, if I had to say, since my 
beginning coaching career was was around health and wellness, it's those are things that can be difficult for us to talk about, which is why we need to talk about these things. So I want to invite you into a different conversation around prosperity, and we'll tap a little bit into the financial freedom piece of it as well, but really want to invite you to connect to the energy of it. So as we begin together, because I want you to receive this on a cellular level, like the energy, the frequency of this transmission, I'm inviting you to take a deep breath and then exhale to release. Notice what your body language is in this moment. Notice if you're uptight and stressed or if you're relaxed and open. And there are so many methods that I blend in my coaching style and my teachings to settle the nervous system. One of them is you can tap. You can just take your fingers and just tap on your chest or the top of your head. Emotional freedom technique. Some of you might be familiar with that. Emotion code. There's all kinds of tools out there to help settle us. Humming, just the mmm, like when you ohm in Yoga class settles the nervous system. Yawning. There's all kinds of things that you can do to drop down into the lower part of your body and feel more grounded. And so taking a breath in and out of the belly is also really helpful. Because when we're relaxed and open, we're ready to receive, right? We've got our guard down, we trust, we're open, we're not guarded, we're not tense. You may remember I I even did a podcast on the, the nutritional piece of this. It's like, you can eat as healthy as you want, but if your body's in fight or flight, it's not assimilating the nutrients. So it's the same thing on a podcast episode, you're you're not digesting the information if you're super tense and not willing to receive. And so I shared with you back in 2018 that I began my journey. I felt like I had everything. I had the health figured out. I had been 10 years health coaching at that point in time. Um, I felt really good about love in my life, my relationship. I've been married and it'll be 19 years this year. And I, at the time, had a coaching business, had had a coaching business where I was, on average, making about $25,000 a year and was really playing small and ready to, I knew that I just had more to give. I knew that there were more people that could benefit from the work that I was doing, the retreats that I was hosting, the type of coaching I was doing, and that it was time for me to take up a little bit more space And part of that as an entrepreneur involves becoming a business owner and just energetically completely taking up a totally different space in in the coaching world where you shift from sort of like a practitioner or practicing to business owner and also coach. And I discovered that there were, it was a difficult conversation. There were so many stories of scarcity and lack in my family that actually didn't align with my soul. Like I I felt like I was one of those people that was born into always believing there was enough, even though it wasn't a lot. I mean, my, my dad was in the military, so, you know, we lived on base. Like we didn't live in like a big, beautiful house. It was just, you know, it, but it felt like it was always enough. And Same thing with my husband. He came from not having much to just trusting and believing and creating, you know, his dream life with his, with his work. And so I really realized that it was a mindset, abundance, prosperity. In fact, in 2018, my word for the year was abundance. And I started to just look at it differently as an energy and discovered all of the unhealthy beliefs I had about my relationship to what I thought was the idea of prosperity or abundance, which was money only. And when I shifted to realizing that it was a mindset and a way of living and being, then that piece started to just come in more easily. So we don't seek 
prosperity or abundance outside of us. It flourishes within us. And that's the piece I really want you to take away today. So let's talk about what what prosperity is and what it isn't. Because I know many of you right now are, are feeling like there isn't enough. And that is also a consciousness and a mindset. And it, it can show up at support, time, money, opportunities, friendships, relationships. But that feeling of scarcity, like there isn't enough, is a state of consciousness that is the opposite state of consciousness as is prosperity. One of the big myths that I want to demystify in this moment is that prosperity equals money or success. That is not true. I have witnessed and experienced myself that when you align to the consciousness of it and really understand it, that that peace will come because you're ready to receive. But in terms of Looking at it on the surface, I want to invite you to rewrite that story right now because we live in a culture that is just so unauthentic with social media, quite honestly, and all of these things that we think we want, like we think we're supposed to look a certain way and, you know, act a certain way and then, oh, we can just have all this stuff. Well, no, that is not reality and it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy and it can create detachment. It can create a feeling of being disconnected. It can cre- it can deepen our subconscious unhealthy saboteur that tells you you're not good enough or worthy enough already. And so we have to completely disconnect ourselves from the idea that prosperity means anything externally because it's not. It will come. But as long as you're attached to that result, you're just going to be in this inner tug of war the whole time. What if I could put prosperity in one word? It's trust. Scarcity is lack of trust. So let's talk a little bit first about what prosperity is not. It is not success. Because everybody defines success differently anyway. For one person, it might be being a multimillionaire, having a private jet. For another person, it might be living well-balanced. For another person, it might be adventure and travel. For another person, it might be freedom, joy, having a beautiful family. So success is is different to many, many people. And prosperity does not equal what we think of as success because who even knows what that means anyway? It's different for everybody. It's not external. There is no validation or checkbox that says, oh oh yeah, you're, you're living prosperous now. You decide what that looks and feels like for you based on your values based on living aligned to your values, and you choose to trust. There was a woman in our North Star Collective um, in one of our shares recently who just shared that she would love to believe that she could get paid to do what she loves and make the same amount of money. And 100% it's possible. It takes trust. It takes alignment. I'm a, a perfect example I'm paid way more than I was in corporate. I love my job. And it just, it comes when you align to what matters most for you and you do it because you love it, because you do it from a place of joy. So if that is you, then create some intentions around it. Now, there's two ways to do this. There can mean that you want to do what you love to do and be paid well for it and start your own business And there's the other way where you can be who you want to be in your current vehicle of transformation. So your current environment. So those are two different energies. They require very different commitments. And you just have to think about which one aligns for you with where you are right now. 
because where you are right now is the vehicle for the next thing. So it is not success. Prosperity is not just money. It is, it's also not having like a stroke of good luck. (laughs) Although it looks that way because a practice of gratitude brings more to be grateful for. It can really look that way on the outside. I I have a husband who I swear every time we go somewhere, there's a parking spot up front for him. He's like, oh, look, there it is again. And it's it's like it's a thing. And I'm like, he's just living in that vibration of being grateful. And so he just knows like it's kind of a silly little thing, but it's a thing, right? It's like everywhere we go, there's a parking spot right up front for him. That's the energy of prosperity. The energy of prosperity is being is trusting and being grateful. So it is not success. It is not money. It is not having like this stroke of good luck. It's not competition. It is not competition. And I am speaking to you ladies especially. What is it? What is it that starts at such a young age? If we go back generations to our ancestors, like when did we start to unravel the matriarch to where there was competition. And I really believe that it just goes back to, it's just probably has something to do with the energy of creation, right? Like maybe we had to compete for who was going to create with the king or whatever, but it's still an energy today that is the mother of two daughters. Like you can see it at a very young age. I mean, it's, it's, almost heartbreaking to think that even as grown women that we're seeing non-competes and competition over collaboration and even the people who say that they don't believe in competition well they're not supporting other women in their needs they're supporting women in their own needs or they're in a non-compete with someone else like just really do your research and your homework around that prosperity is not competition there is no hierarchy there's no hierarchy the energy of abundance and thriving and creation is an energy that is sustainable and it just keeps on giving that's what prosperity is so there's no room for competition Because if you're in the energy of trust, then there is nothing to be threatened by. There's nothing to fear. You know and you trust that there's enough for everyone. And that means there's enough for you and me. There's no getting angry or upset that somebody's going to take something from you. Because there's enough. And when you're aligned to what it is that you're seeking, it comes to you. It doesn't have to, it doesn't mean that you got to make sure that you get all the clients because like for me as a coach, like I'm not for everybody. I am not for everybody. I'm in fact, I'm not for most people and that's okay because prosperity is the energy of just trusting and knowing that when it's aligned, it happens. And so there's that trust word again. So it's not competition. It's not short term. Prosperity is not short term. It's not. So if we use the financial piece, it's not like I work and hustle and make a bunch of money and it's not sustainable. It's not. um, Yeah, I did a post the other day about coaches to avoid that. I think people really need to be to be careful about is there's a lot of broken promises in the coaching and healing industry. I've been in it for 12 years and I've seen it comes from sort of the mentality of the wounded healer or, um, you know, just, a, a the fear of competition. It's not short term. It is sustainable. It's authentic. So prosperity is not unauthentic. It's not self-serving. Prosperity is not self-serving because prosperity is the energy of giving and receiving. And so if you're making broken promises or if somebody is making broken promises that are really just serving them and they're promising results that they really can't do because nobody really knows what your guaranteed results are going to be except for capital H 
I am or God or source or universe, whatever you want to call that. But we're not really in total control of this whole experience. But we do get to choose how we show up and we do get to choose to be in alignment with what matters to us and what we believe to be true for us. It's not scarcity. It's not lack of trust. It's not lack of time. It's not lack of money. It's not lack of support. It's not lack of nutrients that you put into your body. It's not lack of self-care. It's not lack of receiving love from your loved ones. It's not lack of intimacy. None of those are in the energy of prosperity. So if you already know that you're not feeding yourself well, if you're not allowing yourself to be deeply and vulnerably connected to other people in your relationships, if you really don't have, believe that you don't have enough time to do the things you want to do, even though we all have the same 24 hours in a day, if there's never enough money to really do the thing that you want to do, you're in scarcity consciousness. You're not in prosperity consciousness. Prosperity is not overwhelm and it's not chaos. And this is the big one because this is what it looks like on the surface for most of us. It's like if you're running around doing all the things, you don't even have time to receive. You you don't even know what matters most to you. You haven't even thought about it. And so if this is you, I would invite you to journal around that. Like, what is staying busy keeping me from being or doing? Is it keeping you from being in those relationships? Is it keeping you from nourishing yourself? It's probably something on the scarcity list. Is it keeping you from bringing in more income by creating something that you're passionate about? Is it keeping you from your connection to God, your connection to source? Is it keeping you from connection to yourself and your truth? So prosperity is not overwhelm. It's not scarcity. It's not unauthentic. It's not competition. It's not money. It's not success. It's not greed. It's not competition. It's not just a stroke of good luck. You're probably wondering what it is then. So maybe you're sitting there thinking, okay, maybe I see a few of those things. So what, what is the energy of prosperity? How do I step into that? First of all, I want to invite you to consider that prosperity is your birthright. Just by the very energy of the the way that we're created, creation itself is a prosperous energy. It grows and it thrives without needing anything. You're a baby in your mom's belly. You have everything you need for nine months, even when mothers don't take care in their pregnancy. The baby can still survive and thrive. You, I mean, you look in nature, there's springs just bubbling with water. There's rain to water our forests. There's the sun to help the plants grow. The trees are dropping seeds that become other trees. The fruits have seeds to become new trees. Like, this is creative life force energy. Prosperity is creative life force energy. It's your birthright. By the simple fact that you're here, you were born to be prosperous, to prosper, to thrive, to grow, to trust, to create. Just the simple fact that we create as humans is the energy of prosperity. Prosperity is limitless. It's like the energy of God, universal source that creates all life. It never stops. It just creates more and more and more. It just keeps creating. And so the energy of prosperity is believing and knowing that everything, not anything, but everything is possible. That you as a human, you as a creator, you are a creator and a creation, you have limitless potential. And it's knowing and believing that. Of course your ego is going to come in and tell you the reasons why you can't do it. Because 
that's what we're here to navigate. That's, you know, if it was that easy, everybody would do it and then it wouldn't mean anything. Prosperity is growth. So growth comes through navigating the challenges that come with it. Prosperity is your birthright. Prosperity is limitless, just like God's energy. He, God, he, she, universal source gives us more than we're willing to receive. Think about that for a moment. Creative life force energy just keeps on giving. Energy just keeps recycling. I mean, it's really actually fascinating when you think about it. Like the cycle of life is so beautiful. From the scientific aspect to the spiritual to the energetic, it is so beautiful. Nothing ends. It just transforms. Energy's not created or destroyed. Albert Einstein. It just, it's like this energy that just keeps giving and receiving. And so prosperity is limitless, just like God's love, because we are given more than we're ever ready to receive. So the whole how do I live in prosperity is all about receiving. Get out of your thoughts, get out of your emotions, like witness them and acknowledge them and and transmute them and, and work through them, but they are not the truth. The truth is in the present moment. The truth is in trust. Prosperity is in the present moment. It's a willingness to capital R receive. This is the biggest block that I see for years and years and years. And even in my, in, with, in my own, myself, my business, my relationship is the sacral chakra is blocked. Abundance, intimacy, creative life force energy, the very place that we create life in our bodies. Intimacy, the place where we experience that, the sacral is blocked. And there's a huge correlation between that and financial freedom and abundance. Many women who are seeking to heal their relationship with money and their relationship in their marriage or with their spouse or their loved one, their soulmate, whatever that person is for you, they're not fully receiving and they're not even fully giving. They're not fully showing up because of a lack of trust. And when you're willing to really dive deep into this sacral block and transmute it and open it and just be willing to receive like what does that take it takes trust you're gonna hear me say over and over and over again the foundation for prosperity is trust it takes trust to be willing to receive to receive support to receive love to look at life through a different lens to truly see that there's an abundance of time there's an abundance There's an abundance of time, believe it or not, because time honestly doesn't even really exist. We created the measurement, which makes us think that it's scarce. That was a man-made thing. But how, like, it, it exists so differently for everybody. Think of how fast time seems to go as we get older, right? That's one thing that we hear. Look at the people who spend a lot of time doing what they love and people who believe they never have time to do the things they love. Just look at the different ways that people spend time. Notice, okay? And if if you believe there's never enough money, there is an abundance of money in this world. There is so much, so much, and there are so many ways to earn it. It's not easy for everybody, and meaning that, well, I should rewrite that belief. I don't want to sound ignorant to the fact that people are born into completely different situations and dynamics, family dynamics. I totally understand and get that. I've witnessed people come through some pretty amazing things from food stamps to millionaires, from losing a job to creating financial abundance in their business. I've witnessed so many amazing things and not just money, but lack of support, being raised in a really broken family to never even, not even knowing anybody who went to college to 
than getting your company to pay for you to go to college, to become a manager. Like, I've just seen the most amazing things. And I get that not everybody is is born into the same energy. But because the energy of prosperity is an energy that looks and feels differently for everybody. I'd love to share the story of when, in 2015, when I did a homeschool travel year with my kids and did my yoga teacher training in Nicaragua, and we were there for 30 days. So one of the poorest places I've ever been. People's houses were literally like palm fronds over the dirt. Like, they just had a, a cover to protect them from the rain, and they cooked their food over their burning trash. And the thing that my kids remembered the most, we, we everything we took, we left there. We helped the local community with the school that was being built. We went in and taught them English and planted trees and brought them backpacks and school supplies. It was an amazing experience. My kids were pretty young. They were first and fourth grade. But the one thing that they remembered is they were the happiest people. Even though it didn't look, they really didn't even know what they didn't have. But they were happy and it was enough. I tried to cook a special meal for the lady who was helping me with the kids while I was in training all day. And and she (laughs) just wanted her rice and beans. She was so happy with her rice and beans and, you know, the mesa corn tortillas that she would cook. And she just adapted to that and it was enough for her. So prosperity is the energy of receiving. And I would just want to ask you right now just to consider, like, what is one area of my life where I'm blocking this ability to receive? Is it a partnership? Is it support? Is it love, intimacy, food, nourishment, compliments? That's a big one, too. Adventures? Am I not receiving? Am I saying no to fun and joy? Am I saying no to support in some way? Am I making excuses for why things can't work right now? What would happen if I leaned into it and trusted a little bit? Do I not trust people in general? Like, just kind of notice what is the theme that shows up for you? Because this is your invitation to rewrite the story. Where am I willing to receive? What am I willing to receive? What am I ready? What am I ready to receive? If I could have anything, if I trusted, if I believe that I it's my birthright and my potential is limitless, if I believe God or source is willing to give more than I'm willing to receive, well, I'm going to say today I am willing to receive this. And thank you. <laughs> when I started working around this a couple years ago, that was one of the things I would do. Is like, I'm ready to receive this and thank you. <laughs> and Because that's our next cue is that prosperity is gratitude. It is, you hear people say it and I can't tell you how true it is. When, I mean, I've, gratitude's been a practice on and off for probably eight years for me. In the yoga community, when I was teaching um just even in health coaching, when I was doing that, to life coaching, to parenting, am I great at it? No. Do I do it 100% all the time? Of course not. Do I have the intention to, for that to be a daily pra- way of being? Yes. Do I do it all the time? No, but it's my intention. And there's just, if you have never done this, just try a week. Try a month. Or something that you can do is you can join our daily devotion in 13 Moons membership where we have daily journal prompts. They're emailed to you weekly. You go through them. And there's an entire month based on gratitude. I think it's the month of November. Each month we have a different theme. But the intention of journaling when you're given prompts is so much more transformational than just brain dumping. So you can, we'll put that link in the notes. You can check that out. Prosperity is intentional. The energy of it is very aligned and intentional. Because when you know that you're aligned with your values, when you know you're aligned with your truth, you trust. You trust that you've taken the, the aligned steps to receive. So 
I know some of the women that I work with in my community are stepping into or have stepped into becoming coaches or creating their own businesses. Other women I work with are execs who are really creating and up-leveling something in their work environment. And I also have some stay-at-home moms who are just really up-leveling and improving their way of life and in a place of rediscovering their own passion because their identity and role has been a much of which they're grateful for just around their children, but they're really ready to keep creating, but in a new way, right? Instead of like having babies forever, we have this creative prosperous life force energy in us that wants to keep creating. So some of those women are in my community as well. And so it's the energy prosperity is a cycle it's the cycle of creation of giving and receiving and it's just knowing and trusting that it's our birthright and we're we have a creative life force energy within us that wants to just give and receive and gratitude is part of that practice the more that we are grateful for, the more that just keeps showing up to be grateful for because we're in that energy. We're putting the intention on what it is that we're grateful for. And really, it's a shift in perception. It's being willing to see the abundance and prosperity in the universe that's already there. That's really what it is. It's a total shift in perception. And when you're really willing to do it, it takes a couple times. It helps to be supported. The journal prompts that we do, uh, maybe it's November we get through, we do some journal prompts around abundance and specifically as it relates to money. That's one of our, our monthly themes. But we we tie that in with abundance and gratitude. The more grateful we are, the more we have to be grateful for the more we give, for it is in the giving that we receive, the more we're open to receiving. Because we know we're worthy. We've done all the things. It was aligned with our truth and it felt so good. It's such an amazing and beautiful and wonderful energy to be in. And I want to say that you will be challenged. You will always be challenged on your scarcity the minute you decide to invest in yourself, you're going to notice all those things come up again. What happens if I fail? What happens if this? What happens if I wasted my money? What if I don't have the time? What if I don't get the support I need? The what if, what if, what if, what if? Of course, it's all going to come up. It's there to show you what you're here to learn. It's there to show you what you're here to trust. Capital T, trust. So prosperity is your birthright. It is limitless. It is your willingness to receive. It is an ongoing cycle. It is gratitude. It is a balance of giving and receiving. And like we talked about, it's not just money. Prosperity is health. It's abundance in health, money, and love. By aligning your life in your purpose, not to your purpose, in your purpose. In your purpose can be anywhere. It can be at your job. It can be as a, as a mom. It can be in the business you're creating. You are your purpose. It's not something to attach and seek. You are that already. And the secret is defining what you're passionate about. That's like the laughing Buddha, right? It's joy, joy and prosperity. The thing that excites you and makes you happy that's part of your purpose because on a frequency scale, joy is one of the highest vibrating energetic emotions we can experience along with gratitude. Those are the emotions and the energies of prosperity. It is not fear. It is not scarcity. It is not lack of trust. It is not anger. It's none of those. Those things are going to come up and they're just going to like invite you to be like, hey, what's your relationship with prosperity? What do you really think? Because those are the moments where you're really going to get clear. And it's through those challenging moments that we get super clear on what we don't want and just more clear about what we do want. All of those challenges and hardships are just there to keep us 
aligned to what we're really here to embody, to experience. So prosperity is that thriving, it's thriving, thriving energy in health, in money, in love, in our purpose. So the energy of prosperity is to thrive. Just like just like the plants do in the garden. I mean, you guys, I love food so much. I'm such a food lover. It's like one of my love languages. And I got to be honest, like I have kind of a brown thumb. Like I have so many plants at my house because I love them. They're like my babies. And that's kind of one of the ways where I notice if I'm out of alignment is my plants aren't thriving. My garden isn't thriving. But really like plants in our garden and mother nature, like it does a good deal surviving on its own without us, really. Like if we had to be honest, right? It's just the fact that we bring them inside so that we can take care of them. That is like, if you're not, then it doesn't work out so well. But it's just really seeing that everything on the planet is created to thrive. We were created to thrive. I 100% believe that. We are resilient. I've seen so many people break through so many health things and seen the resiliency. So many emotional sabotaging patterns and beliefs. It's all, we just, I know that it's hard to go through these things. It's just part of the experience. It's the part where prosperity is growth. Because to prosper, things just keep growing and creating and thriving. And we don't grow by avoiding. We don't grow by projecting and blaming. We grow when we're willing to just look at the things that have been difficult, learn from them, embrace them, and the willingness to alter course and be willing to receive, the willingness to receive the abundance in life that we so know that we really are. So to sum it up, the things that we said today that prosperity is, is it's your birthright. It's limitless. It's about receiving. It's a cycle of giving and receiving. It's a cycle of life, creative life force energy. It's trust. You can think of trust as like actually the bowl that holds all of it. It's the energy in health, money, and love. It's not just money and success. It's thriving. It's intentional. It's gratitude. And lastly, I just want to leave you with it's freedom. It really is freedom. It's like an energy of allowing, just allowing the natural state of abundance to just flow through you. The natural state of resiliency and trust. I mean, energetically, we're blocking it. You're blocking it. Your unwillingness to trust and receive is blocking your potential, period. That might hurt hearing that, but it's true. If you're not willing to receive love, nourishing food, support, create more time in your calendar for the things that really matter, well, you're that's your choice, but you're blocking it. You're blocking the abundance of the universe, the limitlessness of God's energy, creative life force energy, you're blocking yourself from receiving it. So if you really want to thrive, if you you look at those relationships you want to heal, your relationship with money, love, health, whatever it is, then you've got to create an intention because prosperity is intention. Start becoming great grateful for the things that are working out for you rather than looking at the things that don't because on the other side is freedom nobody tells you what you need to be a certain way because you're sovereign you can listen to my podcast on sovereignty i think it was episode 130 like you don't need external validation it's validation is not prosperity prosperity is too busy creating it's in creator consciousness And there's more flow in your life. So if you like this topic, 
which I hope you do. Please send me a message and tell me what you learned and what you liked. I'd also like to invite you to my new 10-week course on prosperity, of course, because I want to share all of this with you. I want to help you to rediscover your origin story, specifically around money. This prosperity course is a little bit more around money, but it's really about mindset because it's all the things we just talked about. So you reveal your origin story that's likely generational that maybe you're not even aligned to anyways, but you've heard yourself saying the things. You align to a new empowering way to show up in this energy and this consciousness. You do the inner work to peel apart the old story that's creating these blocks in your life that are keeping you from receiving. And you awaken to those old stories and start to align to the new beliefs and the new stories that you want to create. From that place, energetically, you start to attract more of what you want in your life because we're in gratitude. And then we begin to amplify and alchemize our life. Like as soon as we get clear, what you really need is clarity. You need clarity on what was the original story. We, in the course that I teach, we embody the frequency of wealth. So we go beyond the thoughts, beyond the mindsets, beyond the emotions. We work through those. And if you imagine energetically receiving, you the mind is in at, you know, the cranial and then we drop down into the heart and heal the heart space. And then it's like the energy just keeps going down and then you fully embody the, the consciousness of prosperity, the frequency of wealth. You understand the energy of money. That's another thing that we talk about in the course. Um, but the, mo- the, what we begin with is this invitation to really discover, like, what are your stories around it? And one of mine was that I had to work really hard to be successful. You're invited to join if you're feeling this and it's the right time for you. 10 weeks, weekly coaching sessions, and you're going to uncover your story, align to a new empowering truth. We're going to embody the frequency of wealth, understand the energetics of money, this one specifically, because it's not really totally about the money. It's just that's the way that it's showing up for you. It's really about your scarcity consciousness and your old stories. And... We use in this specific course, we're using money to be the tangible asset that we're working through. So we're going to create a relationship with money because that's happening for some of you. It's, it's happening a lot right now. And there's been, there's been a lot of it through the pandemic. People have, you know, lost jobs and lost pay and they've, the, there's a lack of trust, a big lack of trust. So you're invited to join us. We'll drop that link in the notes as well. And if you have any questions around that, send me a message. Um, we'll get on a call. We'll put a link to connect to a call there as well, only for serious seekers. And yeah, just invite you into the energy of living a prosperous life of feeling fulfilled and welcoming freedom and more joy and abundance. And you're going to see that it's going to happen in all ways, like ways that you won't imagine. I think you heard me share, like I I did a, a really deep conversation when I was welcoming a woman into the North Star Collective in January. And we literally got off the phone and like she received a bonus from work that covered the cost or a a portion of the cost of the course. Like when you say yes, you're willing to receive and you ask like, how am I going to make this happen? Show me the way I'm going to choose to trust. I don't know how it happens. Like miracles can literally happen in whatever way they need to happen for you. And I guess if I had one wish, I would just wish that people would believe that. And so a lot of the work that I do is to show people how to trust, to show them also the areas where they are just choosing not to see where it is working out for them. Because that's really the biggest thing that's happening is people just stay blocked and stuck. I see it happen so much. It's it's painful. It's just, you know, having their own experience. I mean, you're, everybody's experience is, is their experience, but it's it can feel like stuckness and anger and frustration and sadness. And it doesn't have to be. 
So thank you for listening in. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. We will drop a couple links in the show notes. And I look forward to seeing you next week. The content of this podcast is to educate, inspire, and inform you of pathways to an embodied healing self. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice from your medical doctor, therapist, registered dietitian, or nutritionist for any questions you may have regarding your diagnosis or condition. Hello, friends, and thank you so much for joining again each week on the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast. I am so deeply honored to share this space with you every week. I know that there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into, and our community is expanding and growing more with each new episode. I'd like to invite you to come on over to genmons.com forward slash tribe and receive some of the wonderful gifts that we have for you, a meditation bundle, energetic alignment, five element wealth, prosperity consciousness. We have a ton of different gifts available for you to enjoy. Now, we have one small favor to ask. In order for this podcast to get into the hearts and souls of like and light-minded people, we need your support. We would love your review and would love it if you'd head on over to jenmons.com forward slash podcast to leave a review or leave one on iTunes so that we can continue to share the love beyond out into the world. Thank you so much again for joining in. We'll see you next week.